Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad says Malaysia will not be using nuclear power to generate electricity. Mahathir acknowledges that nuclear plants are a cheaper option compared with fossil fuel. However, he says there is still no safe way to dispose of radioactive waste, so the country will be sticking to coal. During Mahathir's previous tenure as the country's 4th PM, Malaysia had a very bad experience with tin tailing. Tin tailing is a radiation-producing substance originally used as material in the production of colour television. Mahathir says the waste was buried in a one square kilometre track of land and decades later, the site is still regarded unsafe. The previous BN administration had ambitions of commissioning Malaysia's first nuclear plant in 2021. This would be followed by a second facility the following year. However, it decided to push the deadline to 2030, after Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster in 2011. Meanwhile, Mahathir also spoke of electric cars and his belief that Malaysia is not ready for them. The PM says the batteries are expensive, costing twice as much as internal combustion engines. Hybrid engines, however, are a different story, he says, adding that these are things that are being developed in Malaysia. The government is reactivating the Malaysia Program Office for Power Electricity Reform Agency for at least three years. My power's duty will be to reform the country's electricity industry. According to Energy, Science, Technology, Environment and Climate Change Minister Yo Bi Yin, under the Malaysia Energy Supply Industry 2.0 program, My Power will focus on three objectives. The objectives are to increase industry efficiency, to future-proof the industry structure, put in regulations and key processes, and to empower customers. She says the government is not running the business, but will let the business run the business, because the agency will be closed after three years. Yo explains that if there is no time frame in post, the reform won't ever be finished. She says the whole idea for the industry post-reform is to be green, efficient, market-based, competitive and eventually sustainable. My power will be managed by between 12 to 20 people. WCT Holdings has bagged a 1.77 billion ringgit mixed property construction contract under the proposed Pavilion Damansara Heights commercial development along Jalan Daman Leila. Its wholly owned subsidiary, WCT Berhad, had accepted a letter of award from Impian Expressi. WCT said the contract is due to commence this month and work is expected to be completed within 38 months. The work scope encompasses completion of nine blocks of office towers and three blocks of service apartments on a podium block. WCT's executive chairman, Tan Sri Lim Siu Chun, has an indirect equity interest in Impian, which makes this contract a recurrent related party transaction. Also, Lim and Group MD, Dato Lee Tak Fook, are members of Impian's board. Gamuda confirms that its wholly owned subsidiary, Gamuda Singapore, together with Evia Real Estate, have emerged as the highest bid for a parcel of land in Singapore. The JV bid 318.89 million Singapore dollars for the 5.14 hectare piece of land located in Singapore's Anchorvale Crescent. The land has been earmarked for a planned executive condominium development. According to the Bursa filing, Gamuda said the provisional tender results was announced by the Housing and Development Board of Singapore after the September 14th tender closing date. Gamuda said it would make the necessary announcement on the tender upon receipt of the letter of acceptance by HDB to the successful tenderer, namely Gamuda Avia JV in due course. Malaysia's headline inflation rate is likely to have moderated to 0.3% in August, according to REM rating. In July, inflation has stood at 0.9%. This was due to weaker contribution from the transport fuel component. REM said the average price of RON95 only ascended 3.9% in August. It said that the component's growth should also ease through the rest of the year as low base effects subside further. For the full year, it foresees overall inflation to come in at 1.3% compared with 3.7% last year. As for food inflation, the agency said that it still appears subdued for the rest of 2018, given the zero-rated GST coupled with limited impact from the SST. Similarly, a Reuters poll also expects CPI to rise 0.4% from a year earlier, 
making it the slowest pace in more than three years. The median forecast from 11 analysts polled by Reuters was for August's inflation rate to fall to its lowest since February 2015, where it was 0.1%. However, analysts say that August will be the last of the three months of mild inflation as SST comes into effect. Bank Nagara left its OPR unchanged in its September 5th review, but expects headline inflation to edge upwards for the rest of 2018 and through 2019.